now what I'd like to do is bring up uh, a recent client, uh, Rafal, from Hex Trust. Come on up, Rafal. Um, he's a uh, he's a He's a CTO uh, for Hex Trust, and they are a digital asset custodian. And we're just going to have a, a, a quick little roundtable uh, panel discussion. And I'd like to invite Ross up, up here to, to moderate that. So I guess do not if you need. Thanks, to Peter. So hopefully that wasn't <clears throat> too deep for all of you. But the important part there for me was that Peter <clears throat> kind of unpeeled the onion, and just one thing that we have: secure services containers, and hopefully prove to you why this. Technology is not only unique, um, but it's something you really should look into. So thank you for both uh, coming back up here with me. Rafal, it's great to see you. Thank you. I know as the CTO of, of Hex, uh, it's great that you're a client. But I think uh, much more importantly is what you're going to do with, you, with your clients around the world. So you know, the market cap for digital assets is pretty big. It's about $250 billion, or $270 billion, I guess. But the market for derivatives is 600 trillion. So that's a big gap. Digital assets is growing, but you know, why should traditional banking and finance, a lot of the folks in this room, why should they be concerned about digital assets? What's your view? Well, yeah, in addition actually to the 600 trillion, we also have 180 trillion uh, assets under custody. So mm -hmm. the market is huge. So if we look at uh, the current existing uh, market cap of 260 billion, those are the cryptocurrencies, right? The Bitcoin, the Ethereum, they're great, but actually there is no real tangible assets behind them. When things become really interesting, when we take this 800 trillion, 600 trillion assets and realize they can be digitized on blockchain in a much more effective way than any, uh, any other form of representation. So what we have seen so far, we have the stable coins. So stable coins is basically digitizing fiat currency and that is a critical uh, first step. Digitizing fiat uh, on blockchain allows you to do end-to-end -end settlement and clearing on-chain, right? Removing all the different hops. Then when we start looking at kind of the next asset class is fixed income and OTC derivatives, right? They are complex financial instruments that have long-term legal obligations and contractual clauses. So they're perfect, again, to digitize on blockchain and enforce uh, all these rules and contractual terms through the smart contracts. Then the next asset class that will, will get digitized is the private equity, right? So private equity, venture capital funds. Today, if you want to invest in a VC fund, you need to have at least half a million US dollar, and it's going to get locked in for seven to 10 years. Now imagine you take this uh, VC funds and you tokenize them. It means people, it, people can invest a lot smaller amounts. It means you have liquidity, you can sell and trade your, your VC fund tokens, right? So that's gonna open up a whole new asset class to the whole new uh, number of people, right? Then we have that kind of traditional uh, equity, right? So this is public equities, uh, private equity, uh, private companies, I think like public equity, well, we already have fairly efficient markets. So maybe that's going to be much later uh, before it gets digitized. But what we're seeing is private companies, especially late stage private companies, two, three years before uh, IPO, they're starting to digitize the securities to kind of start unlocking this liquidity uh, right, before, um, right before the IPO. So, so as, you know, as we can see over the coming years, we're going to see all these uh, hundreds of trillions of assets going to start moving and being digitized on blockchain. But what is the challenge with blockchain? It's, it's very different, right? You take your existing back office system, it's not going to work, right? So you need this new level of uh, infrastructure to be able to manage, operate, and transact these digital assets. Right. So that's what we do in, in Hex Trust. So we are, our mission is to enable um, financial institutions to participate and innovate in the digital assets markets. And we offer institutional custody, uh, settlement and clearing, and uh, issuance. Thanks, Rafael. 
So, you know, as proud IBM Z folks, you can tell people like Peter like to talk about what Linux One secure services containers can do. <clears throat> you saw him, how, how he went through that. A lot of pride there. But what's more important actually is to listen to someone like Hex Trust, like Rafa, about what you will do with that technology. How will you use Linux One secure services containers to differentiate your company? Yep. Oh, actually, the most important thing, I'm gonna be able to sleep at night. <laughs> That's a good start. That's a good right? one, I'll take that. It's a good start. But yeah, so, so I think Peter, Peter gave a very good presentation uh, outlining all the different challenges uh, that we face as a business. And if we get hacked, we are out of business, full stop. And the challenge with, with this digital assets, blockchain assets, is that basically transactions are irreversible, right? So this any error, any hack, especially in a public blockchain, you cannot reverse, right? So, okay, we can secure our private keys in the HSM, but, right, it's all about everything else that happens before you actually sign this transaction into the blockchain. Like, we, we have to make sure there is no way that anybody in our company or outside the company can circumvent any of the approvals, authentication, policies. There's just no room uh, for mistake, right? And as Peter was explaining, what the secure service container does, it allows us to execute all these workflows, all this logic, in a cryptographically proven way, in a confidential environment, right, without ability for administrators or even me as a CTO to be able to do anything with it, right? I cannot interfere with it. I cannot change the code. I can have external auditors auditing our logic, our policies, right? So what this really allows us to do is to build kind of industry-grade enterprise systems with very complex workflows, and all these workflows are cryptographically ensured um, to be tamper-proof and, and confidential. And that will allow us to innovate. This is gonna allow us to bring a lot more different digital assets, like the complex derivatives, the contracts, and all the rules associated, associated with that. Thanks, Rob. So, um, to Peter, let me let me let me direct this to you. Um, you know, IBM and Hex are working together. What what do you see as the future in the digital asset space? Well, I think the first thing is that there needs to be a lot more education. Um, as as you know, it becomes more and more commonplace to talk about digital assets. Uh, most people will just like, well, I, you know, I know how to do this. I'm technically savvy. I'm just going to go ahead and use my little toys over there <coughs> to look after my crypto, right? And in fact, you really do need, okay, to have a third party custodian to do the work who's, who's certified, has a license, this is their business, right? So they can do it right. I mean, you don't have piles of cash sitting under your pillow. You use a bank and you don't even think about it. Well, that's kind of where things are gonna eventually will go with respect to digital asset custody. And so, you know, we're sort of very early and we, we are partnering with Hex to sort of, you know, evangelize the message out there to all the different constituencies out there, as well as like you know institutions and so forth, um, but also we we are in fact uh, you know going to market together as well and and, and talking with the, in Asia Pacific there's quite a number of banks that are moving into this space and so we're going to you know jointly operate together uh, as a way to kind of bring digital assets you know into the two institutional space and and really improve the the confidence there is with respect to this because at the end of the day, you know what if something's too hard you're not gonna do it. You're just gonna keep doing whatever you do today. So what we wanna do is change the sort of, you know, well, crypto, uh, you know, we wanna change it to be, oh yeah, no big deal, just another payment, another payment rail we can use, right? And that, that's the confidence that we wanna instill in the market. Yeah, and just from an IBM point of view, I mean, we're very much behind blockchain and digital assets digital ledger technology and how we really think it's gonna change the world, how it's gonna make the world more agile, cut out a lot of the cost of doing business, cut out a lot of the time of doing business, you know, days of doing business sometimes, now down to seconds, and it really is gonna change the world over time. But ho and hopefully we didn't scare you too much talking about all the holes from a security point of view that are out there in the market today with cryptocurrencies and other digital asset solution. We weren't trying to scare you, we're just trying to make you aware so that you don't go down the wrong course 
and you consider technology that could really eliminate and make yourself immune to those different types of threat vectors that, again, Peter and Rafael have, have discussed here today. So with that, thank you for joining us today. Really thank appreciate it. Much. And uh, thanks. Thanks, sir.